What's up everyone, Steven here, and in this video, I wanted to talk about my seven favorite things about iOS, specifically when using an iPhone. So before I get started, there was just a few things I wanted to mention. My opinion on this is highly subjective, so what I like, another person may not like. Apple may not have been the first to implement a feature, or may have even borrowed or copied it from another platform. This video is not intended to pit iOS against another platform or compare it. And as of the shooting of this video, the current version is 7.1.2. I think that's it for the disclaimers. So number one favorite thing is the included browser, Safari. So within iOS, Safari is optimized for speed compared to third-party browsers, and it has a feature I really utilize a lot. This is the scroll to top feature. When you get to the middle or bottom of a page, just tap the status bar at the top of your screen to zoom back up to the top of that page. This makes it much easier and faster to get back to the top of a page, much like hitting the home button key on a keyboard when using Windows. Next is the reader mode, which can essentially take a web article that was once a bit cluttered and turn it into just a page with only the text and any photos and videos that originally accompanied it. Finally, the swiping through history feature. So this is baked in gesture based navigation. You can swipe in from the left edge towards the right to go back to the previous page in your browser history or vice versa to get the next page. This gesture system also works in other parts of the OS and allows you to pick at your messages list in the messages slash mail apps. This gesture feature is built into many third party apps too. Number two favorite thing is the software updates. So what's nice with iOS is you're getting updates directly from Apple. These updates include interface refinements, bug fixes, improvements, and new features. They're typically done over the air or via USB connection with your device to iTunes. They typically support older devices for some time. iOS 7 has already had seven updates in September of 2013. I like the updates because you're getting direct company support and pretty frequently at about a monthly rate. Number three is iMessage. I like iMessage because it's a text message stock app that works over the internet, not just a cell phone network. So texts are sent free over Wi-Fi. That's useful when there's no mobile reception, but you have an internet connection. So assuming you and the receiver have a compatible device, you can text to other Apple IDs. Aesthetically, I like the appearance. You get these blue color bubbles that are easy to read against a clean white backdrop. You also get delivery receipts so you know that your message has been sent. You can tell when you're about to get an incoming message as the software shows you when someone's in the middle of a reply. It seems to send quickly and there's very little lag or delay. You can swipe to delete a conversation and swipe to go back to the thread list while in a message. iMessage works with other Apple devices like a MacBook or iPad so you can text to and from them. Contradictory to a lot of what I see said on the internet, I actually like the stock keyboard. It's responsive and accurate and has given me no problems up to this point. Lastly, I like that iMessage doesn't compromise photo resolution through compression when sending a picture over. Number four is kind of a combination of the smoothness, fluidity, frame rates, and stability. I've used iOS since late 2012, and it always struck me as a really smooth OS that emphasized fluidity and a good frame rate. While I don't have an app that can quantify that rate, it's always maintained what appears to be a certain smoothness no matter what I'm doing with it. The animations within the OS have no stuttering or hangups and do that consistently. This carries over to third-party apps as well. Especially with version 7.1.2, I've experienced very little to no crashing having used the iPhone 5 since October of 2012. I just need to occasionally soft reset the phone to give it a refresh. A big factor in all of this is memory management, so maintaining a surplus amount of internal memory can help a lot, like at least 2 or 3 gigs. I work in cell phone retail, and the most common problematic areas for customers that need to be managed in terms of memory are photos and videos and text messages. This generally prevents and alleviates a lot of powering off and freezing issues. Number five is also a combination. It's the user experience, the user interface, and the ecosystem delivery. There's something about the look of iOS that I really enjoy. It has a certain aesthetic or distinct look and feel. I really like the system-wide font of Helvetica New. Everything is just clean and has a certain polish that is difficult to describe, but you're aware of it when you're using the phone. 
The third party apps that you download tend to feel like they're made exclusively for iOS because of the consistency with the interface guidelines provided by Apple. A lot of what makes the user interface enjoyable is iOS's framework which utilizes Cocoa Touch for development on the operating system. It's written in Objective-C and focuses on being optimized for a touch-based interface. I think what makes everything run so smoothly is that a majority of the system's resources are focused on whatever app is being used at that very moment and freezes the background apps that are running graphics. Maybe my favorite part of the entire user experience is how reliable the system is. Since I got the phone back in October of 2012, I just don't experience much frustration with it. In the past, I've dealt with other phones that experience random crashes and glitches that kind of hampered the experience. With iOS, everything responds and works the way I want it to, pretty much every time, and that is huge for me. I no longer have the patience for crashes and glitching in a device that I use so often. The overused and somewhat annoying phrase a lot of people say is true, at least for me. It just works. Number six is the recently added Control Center. Control Center is a feature I love and use all the time. It was definitely a welcome addition with iOS 7 and was way overdue. You get to it by swiping up from the bottom of the screen. It allows you to turn on or off airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and do not disturb. You can lock your screen's orientation or adjust its brightness, the ability to play, pause, or skip a song. It also gives you access to your flashlight, timer, calculator, and camera. Within that control center is a pretty useful function called AirDrop. It allows you to share photos and videos with another iOS device that's on the same Wi-Fi network. So I use this mainly when my mom comes over and I want to share a bunch of baby pictures and don't want to have to send them all through email or text. It works really well and is super convenient. And finally, number seven is syncing. So my last favorite thing about iOS is the syncing options it offers. In my line of work, when a customer upgrades from their old phone to a new one, they can actually copy everything from the old phone to the new one via iTunes or iCloud. This is one of those under the radar conveniences that actually makes a huge impact assuming you're continuing within the iOS ecosystem. It's also really useful in a situation where maybe you had your phone replaced via warranty or needed to wipe it if you were troubleshooting the software. You essentially pick up where you left off as everything is backed up and restored to the new phone. I have noticed it doesn't transfer mp3s. Those have to be re-added via iTunes. So thanks for watching the video and hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please leave a thumbs up down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one.